Let's get a little hat discussion going here. Alrighty. Uh, most of you guys are, uh, you know, at home, kind of trying to pass time for this quarantine uh, business and uh, wondering about what hat you might get in the future or when it might come in. I'm sure things are going to get better pretty soon. They say there might be two weeks of, like, getting worseness as far as the news and the virus is concerned. Um, hopefully after that things will turn hill and there will be less problems and things will improve. Um, at this point, you know, we're still offering this 20% uh, support local. I think it's support dash local. You could just um, find out if you go to the uh, what is it? The community community section of my um, website, not my website, my YouTube page. Uh, community it has it. If you go up a post or two, it's a special COVID discount code, and I believe you could. Uh, buy hats with the code or even just a um like a a store credit kind of like a um gift certificate with 20 percent off and then when things get back to normal after viral mania you could use the 20 percent off on anything you'd like which is pretty good um they're definitely doing that i know that there's people coming into the shop one or two times a day now to do some packing and they're doing it like in a non-contact kind of a uh, social distancing friendly kind of way and stuff but um, when we get back on our feet after this um, pandemic um, we'll, get, we'll probably start thinking about summer hats uh, at this point felt hats are you know we're waiting and waiting and waiting and um, we're kind of like at a stalemate like a uh, sort of a, a pause at the, in the shipping right now so uh, I figured by the time things start up again we'll be looking for a nice straw hat now um, there are all different types of straws and um, straw westerns tend to be the heaviest and the most rugged of all but they do tend to last you very 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 long they start off hard glassy and crunchy you know you could like knock on them um, and as they start getting wet and you take it out camping and you, you know you squeeze it and shape it and do things with it and it gets wet again and sweaty it starts getting soft um, it gets to the point where it gets really soft where it's just like a piece of paper just flopping down you know and then you could spray it you could spray it with hairspray um, just don't get any on here so just do the overside of the brim get some hairspray on there and then, um, you know, do a little shaping. Like when it's just about dry, tacky or something, put a rubber band around here. Yeah, see how that goes. Or a piece of string and tie it up. Tie it up like a little V like this. You know, straight or at a V. Either way, V, straight. Put some string on there where it's just about dry. And let it dry in place. You could do that. But uh, it takes a long time to soften a, uh, a Shantung Western. They're made out of something called Shantung, which is a natural straw. It's made out of like wood fiber. Um, they call it paper straw, but um, it's better than that. They're taking the fiber from paper, natural wood, um, breathable paper, which is a, it's a good natural fiber. And they're using technology to make it very, very thin. And um, they're making little holes in it. and they're laminating it with a kind of a plasticky spray type of thing so you know it's a natural material that's um, created by machines I guess um, sort of like a man-made straw made from natural stuff so you know you're able to do all kinds of things like that open crown lattice work and all kinds of cool shapes with it and stuff Panama is a hand woven straw. It's something that comes from Ecuador only. It doesn't come from Panama. Oops, dropped my pick. Um, it comes from Ecuador, and it, you can tell Panama by the concentric rings. They start in the center here in the crown, and there's rings, concentric rings, going round and round and round. Generally, on the inside somewhere, there'll be like a brand, kind of like a wood burnt stamp saying handmade in Ecuador 
genuine Panama hat. Um, it sometimes is barely there and just faded, just looks like a little ring, and a letter or two, but it should be in there somewhere. It should say made in Ecuador, but those hats generally are not finished in Ecuador. They're not known for um, finishing the best hats and stuff. Generally, they weave the, the straw. It's a flat, big, flat, kind of a mat, open crown mat thing called a hat body, which short brim, big brim, they all come from the same hat body. It's almost like a round mat, like a disc. And they stack up hundreds and hundreds of those that they weave in Ecuador. They ship them out to the U.S., where companies like Stetson and Bailey and all the U.S. companies turn them into hats. They put in sweatbands, they shape them, they block them, you know, they stiffen them, put in the, the reed, the, whatever it needs, you know, the bows and the shapings. And, and basically they turn it into a hat. So in Ecuador, they're only really making the material. They're making the Panama straw by hand. So you'll generally see two countries of origin. You'll see, well, why is this made in USA? Why is this made in Mexico? Why is this made in Italy? I thought they were made in Ecuador. Yes, they're woven in Ecuador, but then they go to someplace else. Generally, um, a really nice company in Italy is Tessi, T-E-S-I. They're the company that made Borsellino's straws for decades and decades. Uh, I think they still do, I'm not sure. But uh, any Borsellino straw you ever got was made by Tessie in their same factory. So you were able to get them with the Tessie name or the Borsellino name. Same quality, same people making them, same factory, different label. That's it. Um, Tessie made the best straws in Italy, so Borsellino went to them because they were the best. Um, there's uh, a lot of that stuff going on, and it's perfectly okay because they let the experts uh, make the straws, you know. And um, it's just better than going out and spending like a millions and millions of dollars for a straw facility and, you know, train the people and the machines and everything, and you have no experience. You, know, you let somebody with the experience make the straws for you, and you guys design them, and you just pick everything, you know. Um, they do the same thing with, like, their... Um, their caps, they don't make their own caps, you know, they have other people make it. Stetson doesn't make their own caps. There's somebody called Stetson US, uh, Stetson Europe who does it. And it's an old, old company, very old, hundreds of years old, at least a hundred, you know. In Europe, they've got older history than us in the US. And these guys in Germany have been making caps, flat caps, way, way longer, you know, than uh, most people in the US has ever, you know heard of them and they're the experts so Stetson went to them and they had them uh, in Germany make them the best flat cap line newsboy and they put the Stetson label in them made in Germany but it's an American company um, much better that way they uh, do it that way they get the experts the people who have been running the same machine for 50 years making your cap um, instead of training some new jack on some new equipment and some you know it's just, uh, it's better that way. So, uh, as far as different straws, there's all different kinds. There's hemp, also known as Milan. Milan is a woven straw. It could be made out of hemp, it could be made out of plastic, it could be made out of um, all kinds of things. Paper, paper straw. Uh, Milan is a braided, kind of like, it looks like a ribbed, kind of a braided sort of a straw. And it has a good flexibility. It's actually stretchy and, um, you know, foldable, crushable, and stuff like that. Um, hemp is the really good Milan straw. Some of them are made out of other things, like uh, paper. Other ones are made out of plastic. Um, hemp is the real good stuff. Milan is nice straw. It's a little bit heavier. It's definitely way, way more durable than Panama. You know, a hemp hat, you could do this thousands of times, it's not going to break. Uh, Panama might crunch and break and crack. Um, so with Milan, you're getting stretch and you're getting toughness. Um, it'll even take a little bit of rain and stuff. Um, Panama, you're getting uh, lightness. As it gets softer, the price goes up, so you want more stretchiness go with a, um, a bleached model. The bleached color 
always gives it more stretchiness. Um, the natural ones, you're going to have to pay more for that kind of stretchiness. And generally, the bleached are the stuff that has good stretchiness. Um, it has a flexibility. There's something about the bleaching process on the Panama hats that gives it more flex. So if you have a five, let's say a $200 Panama hat in natural, and then a $200 Panama, the same model in um, in bleached, the bleached version will be more stretchier and softer. The natural version of the same hat will be more crunchy and more prone to breaking and stuff. Um, it's just the way it is. The bleached hats, it gives it a stretchiness. It just does something to it. Um, the natural hats, they have to take all of the colored, like the, the natural colored ones, and match the straw. So they match all the colors of the pieces of straw. They take the dark brown stuff, they throw it in a separate pile, the black, the dark ones, and they bleach those out. And those become the bleach ones. So they're cheaper in a way. You don't get like, you get sort of less bang for the buck in a way with, um, with a natural hat because they have to match everything up. It's more expensive that way. They match the fibers. But you get way more bang for the buck with a, um, a bleached hat of the same type, the same price, because it's stretchy and softer. Um, probably less prone to breaking. Um, there are other straws like Baku, B-A-K-U, which um, it's, a, it's an Asian straw. Could be, uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, Indonesian from Bali or something like that. I forgot where it comes from. Baku is a very light, light straw. It's made from rice. Um, you don't see it too much anymore. It started to disappear because there was nobody really bringing in good quality Baku. There's something similar to Baku now called uh, Parabuntal, uh, Bali Buntal, Parabuntal, Sisal. Those are all super, super light, light straws like feather. You know, you go like this and it's just like <sighs> catches the air. They're super light, but they're delicate. Baku is gorgeous if you could find nice Baku. The cheaper stuff, it should be fine, really fine. Almost looks like a Panama with a super fine satin finish. Like so fine, like you don't see any weave at all. Um, and cheaper Baku is uh, you know, not that great. It's got a very broad weave and stuff. I would say, um, it's nice if you could find good Baku, B-A-K-U. Right now it's a lot easier to find sisal. Um, sisal is a sort of a metallic plant. Um, if you ever see those rugs like in Pottery Barn that have like these metallic strands going through it, that's sisal. It's all the same stuff, uh, sisal, parasisal, uh, parabuntal, belly buntal. There are different weaves of the same stuff. This stuff is also feather light. It's a straw that's feather, feather light. It catches the wind. Um, it's super, super delicate. If it gets uh, wet, it's just toast. They're super hard to reshape when they get wet. So buy these if you have the kind of lifestyle where you go from your, I don't know, your house to your garage to the, to the beach club back to your, you know, it's not something you want to get wet. Uh, sisal is very very light it comes in great colors it takes dye nicely if you want navy or burgundy or black or cool colors like that um, but yeah it's the most delicate and the most hardest to, definitely the hardest to reshape with steam um, you have to almost stretch it as you steam it it's like impossible and you could reblock it using you know manufacturing techniques blocking um, there are other Inexpensive straws that I that I actually love. Uh, coconut straw is kind of cheap, um, but it um, doesn't last forever. But the coconut straws, it's the one that Sam Sneed, the golfer, used to wear. You could look him up, Sam Sneed, and you'll see he's wearing a, a flat top brown straw hat, usually with a paisley clip-on band. Um, we call it the Telecoco. It's made from coconut straw, from coconut palms. They're inexpensive and they're really nice. They don't last long. They tend to uh, break in the seams. The seams open up because they get dry. Um, but other cheap straws like that that I really love are seagrass. Seagrass is a um, it's a more open weave. It's a kind of a brownish, like a burlap color, the exact same color as burlap. It's got a nice open weave and it smells like uh, tea, like a sweet, wet black tea kind. It's the most gorgeous smell if you, you know, you smell the straw 
really close. Um, seagrass is beautiful if you can take some light going through. They're generally not a very uh, opaque straw. They have a lot of openings. It's almost like a basket weave. So, you know, they're cool if, as long as you're not super fine skin, you haven't had any medical problems like melanoma or anything. Um, but seagrass is awesome. It's a nice straw. Sometimes they even put fabric under the brim and they keep the top open for ventilation, for side vents, and they put fabric inside the top and inside the brim to uh, make it more opaque on the parts that are coming from a bird's eye view. And then you get side vents. We used to have some seagrass outbacks and hats like that. Um, there's other straws. Uh, what is that? There's a, a really nice crushable straw. Hmm. Which type of straws should I get into? Um, I don't know. We got into most of the, the important straws, I think. Um, maybe we'll cut it here because people tell me sometimes my videos are too long. So, I think let's make it longer. Let's play a little bit more raw. Isn't that old? Mm -hmm. 